That right there is five Night Runners with Silver Chevrons. Okay, Superb Fairy Ren versus Ghost Dragon. A very, very interesting Skaven build. I've ranted and raved about this matchup enough, so I'll just leave it alone and cast it normally. Ikit Claw and Double Assassin. Double Assassin not usually brought here, and I don't know what they're going to do. They don't have armor piercing, so they're not actually going to get through dinosaurs very well. But... Super Fairy Ren didn't really bring a lot of dinosaurs. He has Tehenowen on his Stegadon mount with the uh, Sky Laser. Flock of Doom. Hands of Pen Propelt for him. Then a bunch of Skinks. Skink Cohorts, Skink Cohorts with Javelins, some Skink Skirmishers, Feral Cold Ones for his army, and then Ripperdactyl Riders out the wazoo, including the Colossus Dot Hunters. No healing for these lizards. The other side for the Skaven. Five Night Runners, Silver Chevrons, like you mentioned, a bunch of Rat Ogres, including the Pit Fighters of Hell's Deep, two Assassins, Ikit Claw with Flensing Ruin, Howling Warp Gale, and Warp Lightning, Skaven Slaves, and Ikit Zap Zap. Ikit Zap Zap, mostly just focusing on Tehenowin. Good target. Without healing, I mean, he is their lord. He's also a really big monster piece. He's also their caster. So, a three for one value by poking him down. Elsewhere, the Skinks are getting involved. Feral Cold One's helping them out versus Skaven Slaves, but it can cause Brass Orb is going to hit them. It'll do a bit of damage. Nice poke, but not, like, crucial unit-killing damage. Some Night Runners and Rat Ogres are overextending, chasing off some Skink Skirmishers. They will want to fall back and defend their positions a little more intensely. I'm curious about this Night Runner and Rat Ogre pairing that we seem to be going with here. I guess they can throw from between the Rat Ogres and not do too much friendly fire, and then you have kind of a weird mobile skirmish unit. But it gets Zap Zap. Actually, it's not even a kid Zap Zap, it's just a Warp Lighting Cannon. My bad. Warp Lighting Cannon is left alone, so some Feral Cold Ones and Ripper Dactyls will come deal with it. And Clan Rat Spears are not going to be the best defense against those things, like they won't be able to stop them from shutting down the Warp Lightning Cannon. Dehenowin is ready to get involved. Skink Skirmishers are counter-skirmishing against the Night Runners. Nice Warp Lightning, though, from Ikit. Ooh, it was Overcast from the extra amount of Lightning Bolts. It's so nice Overcast will actually route off to those Skink Cohorts, and Tehenowin gets involved with the Colossus of the Hunters. The Pit Fighters are torn apart by this pressure. I wonder if the Double Assassin will come over here and try and fight Tehenowin, but I really doubt they'll get too much damage in. Ikit plus the Clan Rats... Able to peel one of the Feral Cold Ones. The other Feral Cold Ones still fighting, and Ripper Dactyls had kind of left for a little bit, but they're back now. Howling Warp Gale keeping them in the air for just a second. This Game and Slave Frontline getting torn apart by Feral Cold Ones as they continue to move in. Tehenowin is below half HP now as the Warp Lightning Cannon continues to tax his HP. More Skirmishers and Rat Ogres returning. We have another Rat Ogre off in the distance, really close to the edge of the, the map. Probably just chase something off, but really does need to return to the fight. Nicket is surrounded, though he chucked out a Flensing Ruin, it appears, to do some damage to these guys. Feral Cold One's getting outside of the ring, leaving Nicket all alone. Skaven are slightly up on the balance of power still. A lot of Skinks are dead. Tenowin's very injured, but for the Lizardmen, we still have two healthy Ripperdactyls on my screen. The Colossal Hunters are somewhere, right? There they are. They're chilling. So all three Reproductals are very, very healthy. Tehenowin's going to take a fight with the Assassin here, but Assassin's Trophy is out, lowering the melee attack of everyone around by 40, and then another uh, Assassin's Trophy is on Tehenowin. So he has minus 64 melee attack right now. Brutal. The Reproductals are in trying to fight those Assassins, but they're also down to 14, I think I saw. 14 melee attack. Ooh, just four. Yeah, not great. Not great at all. Tenowin uses his first Sky Laser, tries to protect these Clan Rat Spears, but they dodge away. They're, they want nothing to do with this. And the Assassins are going to be rather tanky against Ripperdactyl Riders. Ripperdactyl Riders are weird. Sometimes they can kill foot characters very easily, and other times they can't do anything about it. Second Rival High Talisman is out. Second Assassin's Trophy is also. Tenowin's stats nerfed yet again as Night Runners throw in. Skinks and Ripperdactyl Riders trying to chase them down. This could be big. Hands pump Hands Impenetrable Pelt is cast onto Lost the Hunters as they chase down Ikit Claw, and Ikit is a large target, so they're much better at surrounding him and dealing real damage. Tenowin runs away to go fight some Night Runners and stay outside of that Rival Hide Talisman while it wears off, and those are single-use items, so there's no more Rival Hide Talismans for the rest of the game. 
Ikaclaw is still getting attacked by the Clawstone Hunters. He does have a Skaven Brew, giving him better melee stats and a nice Warp Lightning pokes those guys down further. The Ripperdacker Riders are mostly chasing other stuff off. Somehow the Warp Lightning Cannon is back, and that is going to be a big problem for Lizardmen if they allow it to continue. Thankfully for them, they do have a Ripperdack over nearby that can just jump onto it immediately and start shutting that down. More Rippers fighting Skaven Slaves and Rat Ogres. If they focus the Rat Ogres, they'll be just fine. Ick Claw. No, that was a flock of damage. I was like, did they get just burn a cleansing rune on a random single Ripper Dack one? Assassins left in the dust. Hennowin and his Ripper Dack Riders are chasing down Ickit. But a Howling Warp Gale locks them in place for a moment. Warp Lightning Cannon is routed yet again, and Rat Ogres are barely hanging on, but they're terror out away from Tehenowin as he charges in on that big scary dinosaur. And Ikid is once again in trouble. For the Skaven, they do have some Rat Ogres returning from the far reaches of space. Still have some Night Runners who are healthy, though not a lot of ammunition on those guys. I think the Lizardmen are taking the lead. Bounce Power is agreeing that it's at least 50 50, but I feel like the, the Lizards are in a better spot. Both sides have about equal trap support, and it's just a lot of Ripperdactyl Riders and Tandawan versus Ikid and the two Assassins is really all that matters at this point. Everything else is too damaged to really factor in. Tendowin gets another charge onto Aka Claw, who has proved rather annoying for the Lizard then to finish off, where they have done a lot of damage to him. And these healthy Rat Ogres are returning. Can the Clawstone Hunters peel off? I think the Clawstone Hunters should try and go kill the Rat Ogres in open space before they get to the supporting infantry. Because they'll get the free charge. Being a flying unit attacking a ground unit, there's no way those guys can have the attack orders onto them. Ripperdactyl's trying to get into the sky, though. Don't want to take the fight with the Rat Ogres now that they're this close to the Night Runners and Assassins, but it looks like they don't get much of a choice as several of their models are still on the ground when the fight happens. Other Ripperdactyl's running down Night Runners. It's Gink. Skirmishers trying to return to the fight and provide those poison darts. One of our Ripperdactyl's is terror routing. Claw Hunters dive back in to try and help kill Ikka Claw, but Tehenowin is not nearby to help out. He is running away. Another Howling Warp Gale tries to stop the Claw Hunters from killing Ekka Claw, and he does escape with less than 1,000 HP. Tehenowin gives himself Panzer Pedals for, for more speed, more melee defense, and physical resistance, trying to get out of here. Big pileup of Rat Ogres, but it looks like a Flock of Doom. will do some damage to them, not a ton, but some, and then that forces Terror Routes out of a couple of them. There they go. So two are running. We have one Rat Ogre, two Assassins still fighting Tehenowin as he falls back. Ikit has returned again. I think that was his first route. I think that was his first natural route. Tehenowin uses his second Sky Laser. Nightrunner is going to dodge yet again. Not far enough. They do get poked by it a little bit. So do the Rat Ogres. Boss the Hunter is fighting bravely against these Rat Ogres. And Ikit routes again. This one just appeared to be for no reason whatsoever. As he's going to come back any second now. He has 13 leadership. Skinks kite to Hennoin kites. It gets back one more time. But the Ripperdactyl charge does his leadership holder. Will he break and shatter for the third time? The lizard men don't even have to pursue him off or anything. Ripperdactyls get some damage, which is honestly concerning. Yeah, because Ikit's going to shatter now. No caster, no lord for the Skaven, though the lord is still on the field of battle, so they're not going to take the leadership debuff until he actually routes off. Tehenowin is stuck fighting double assassins. Their assassin's trophy on him. The Ripperdactyls are here to peel. There is no Skaven support for once. Now the Ripperdactyls can get a good surround on the assassins and maybe get that juicy damage they so desire. But really, it's a ticking time bomb for the Skaven until Ikit gets off the battlefield. And then Tehenowin can cycle route everything on this map because he's a big scary monster. And their leadership without a lord is just non-existent. Rat Ogres charging in onto our Ripper Dactyl friends. Swiping at him, getting some good damage. A couple models take off, several don't. And Tehenowin's going to spend his time chasing down Night Runners while he waits for Ikit to get off the field so that the Assassins can be terror routed away. Because one of them's at half HP, so he's pretty much a dead man walking. Skink Skirmishers routing off Rat Ogres, and Ikit is off the field. We'll see a lot of Skaven depart of their own volition here as we lose a Rat Ogre, we lose a Skaven Slave. And now the assassins aren't so sure in their purpose. Tehenowin turns around. He's ready to charge back into these guys. And he could tear out them so quickly on the charge. This one's at three quarters HP. And he's close to terror routing. 
Tenon's kind of lost the plot. Assassin's Trophy debuffing him yet again to minuscule stats. And he gets caught on his own Ripper Dactyl, so he doesn't actually get a charge off. Standard Ground is popped, giving the Ripper Dactyls a bit more melee defense and leadership. Rat Ogres are once again trying to rejoin the fight, but I think as soon as they get close to here, they will route away. Tehenowin comes in. Assassin's Trophy has worn off. He's back into the fight now. Rat Ogres terror route away. I mean, natural route, sorry. Not everything in the life is a terror route, but that's it. Yeah, that's one. There goes an assassin. Terror routing. The other one's soon to follow for sure. And a night runner is trying to help their uh, hero Eshin brethren. Assassin's back from his uh, brief terror route. Ripper Doctor Rider's still trying to get any damage out they can. The assassin's close to naturally routing. Which could be a concern. Tanuin's still at 2000 HP. Nothing here has significant armor piercing. Bounce power's in the Skaven's favor, but I've seen enough Skaven games to know that that's a load of shit. These guys are in dire straits. <laughs> There's a big dinosaur on the field, and they don't have a lord. It's it's a bad time to be a Skaven as a Night Runner terror routes at half HP. There goes an assassin naturally routing the other one. I believe that this one that's right here can terror route. I think his friend is the one that had terror immunity for a bit because he already routed once. There's a big hit. Yep. Okay, so both assassins are routing now. That is GG. Because Skaven are an S-tier faction, and it's definitely not just as soon as you get a large monster and their lord's dead, you win the whole game. Tehenowin can beat them. Ripper Dactyls did well, Tehenowin did well. Feral Cold Ones were annoying, but didn't get their value back. Skink Cohorts didn't really do that much. Skink Skirmishers were around and annoying. Yeah, some of them got good value. And that's that. For Ghost Dragon... Ica Claw did great. Assassins, neither of them paid for themselves, but they were annoying for sure. Warp Lightning Cannon and Rat Ogres did fine. Night Runners, mostly good value. And that's about it. GG. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.